2600 years ago, two contemporaries taught the world the language of spirituality and understanding. For over a thousand years, these religions flourished under India's finest rulers. Travelers from around the world wrote vivid accounts of the grandeur and beauty of a vibrant kingdom and called this land of Magadh as the heart of the world. capital of modern day Bihar. Embellished in today's modern setting, Patna's deep traditional roots help relive the stories of a bygone era. This is the Patna Sahib Darwa, the birthplace of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, born in the year 1666. This place is one of the five Due to the religious persecution of Hindus by the Mughal ruler Aurangzeb, Guru Gobind Singh called upon his people to lay down their lives and to uphold the religion. And thus, Sikhism was born. The Khalsa Pant was set up with emphasis on unity and integration but primarily for the protection of the deprived section of society. Here, no distinction is made between the rich and poor. At the Guru's Langar, everyone sits and eats together on the ground to wash away the differences of caste, creed and religion. And that is the essence of Sikhism. In the 4th century BC, the Greek traveller Megasthenes thus sailed on these very banks of the Ganges, as he described Patliputra as the greatest Indian city, a symbol of militaristic might and religious understanding under the Mauryas. But in the 6th century BC, Patna was giving rise to a host of scientific and religious thinkers. One of them was Vardhaman Mahavir, who renounced his kingdom at the age of 30, becoming a monk without clothes and without worldly possessions. It was at this temple in Pawapuri where he was cremated. After Nirvan, when he came to this place, when he was in the Agni Sanskar, 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 when he was in the यहाँ की मिट्टी को अपने अपने घरों की ओर ले गए यह प्रक्रिया बहुत दिनों तक चलते गया आज भी जारी है उसी प्रक्रिया के तहत यह गड्ढा बढ़ते बढ़ते कालांतर में यह सरोवर के रूप में परिवर्तित हुआ तब से जल मंदिर के नाम से विख्यात हुआ इसमें कमल भी खिलते हैं इसलिए इस मंदिर का पूरा नाम है पावापुरी जल मंदिर पद्म सरोवर कमल सरोवर का हम, मैं कई जैनों को देखा हूँ अपने सफर के दौरान लेकिन मैं एक बात नहीं जान पाया क्या ऐसा ये अस्थाई रूप से मान्यता है कि सिर्फ महावीर जी ही जैन धारणा के सबसे मुख्य प्रवक्ता है महावीर स्वामी जी आधुनिक काल के हुए जो जैन धर्म में बहुत सारे कठिन नियम थे उसको इन्होंने कुछ हद तक सरल बनाया और जन जन तक जो पहुंचाया इसलिए भगवान महावीर को लोग ज्यादा जानते हैं they have come to Samet Sikharji, that is near Madhuban. This is the fifth visit for us on a religious tour. I was always intrigued about um, what are the principles of Jainism, as in what is the essence of Jainism. See, it is like Ahimsa. We are not supposed to kill even the smallest insect. That is the main principle. And then there are there are lot of uh, principles laid down by Lord Mahavira that we have to follow very strictly. That is what we are following. Mm -hmm. 
After some soul searching, it was time to make my way towards Rajagir. The roads here are filled with eccentricities and the rugged landscape only adds an ancient charm to the region, making me wonder about the lives of people here. But it's on these paved roads of development that we find embedded the stories of a different India. Situated in Rajgir are the very interesting caves of Sonkhanda that date back to the 3rd century AD. The western part of the cave structure has a doorway which leads inside. Local legends say that the caves hold a passage to the treasures of King Bimbisar and the only way to reach it is to decipher the inscriptions on the caves engraved in ancient Shanklipi. Intrigued by the fact that the nearby Saptaparni caves is said to connect to the other side of the hill we're on, I set out with my friend Rishabh to discover the mystery behind all of it. Lord Buddha used to uh, meditate here after his uh, afternoon means. Ah. We climbed 500 odd steps to reach this place. Have and deep breath. The name Softparni has been derived from the term Saptadhara. In Gufao ke piche, there are a set of seven streams which provide water to the hot springs that are in and around Rajani. Really time the journey, but we'll still go inside and find out. The cave <coughs> stretches beyond this point, but it's very narrow. Hai. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How could a man who had everything you could dream of renounce his palatial life for one of suffering, trying to understand the meaning of life? My questions bring me to the Patna Museum to learn more about Gautam Buddha. For six years, he went through pain and suffering almost starving himself to death before realizing its pointlessness. The Patna Museum houses the sacred ashes of Buddha found in Vaishali where he preached his last sermon before he attained his nirvana. Today, Vaishali is a site of reverence for both Jains and Buddhists. Here, Ashoka erected a single lion capital to commemorate Buddha's last sermon, where he gave eight main points. As he was dying, he was supposed to have told his disciples, Do not forget what I have taught. Forget about me and my belongings, but not what I have taught.
when reading accounts of great travellers in ancient India, one can't help but wonder about its glorious past and how a single person or an event can rewrite the pages of hundreds of years of history. During its heyday in the first millennium AD, Nalanda University was one of the world's first and finest residential universities and accommodated over 10,000 students and 2,000 teachers. This is Nalanda University, the meeting place of the two great contemporaries of the times, Gautam Buddha and Vardhaman Mahavir. In the 13th century, Bhakti Arkhilji sacked the university and massacred its monks. The torch library was said to have burned for more than six continuous months. Whatever we know about Nalanda, basically it comes from the travelogues of the four important monk scholars who stayed here. Actually, you know, this was uh, after the demise of Buddha, Mahaparinirvana Buddha, the Magadha, Magadha became, you know, like hub of Buddhist activities. There were many monasteries. When Shwensang came here in 7th century, he says about more than 50 prominent monasteries within this area. Today, Nalanda, mostly in ruins, can only hint of its glorious past. Ising, the 7th century traveller in his book, gives a description of a day in the life of a monk. In the evenings, it is said that butter lamps would light up Nalanda and provide a mystic appearance to this temple of Buddhist learning. Just to get an entrance into this university, there were four gateways, each under the supervision of Adwar Pandit. Basically, everything inside this university was free. All you had to do was to crack the entrance test held by these Dwar Pandits who used to ask you one simple question. If you answer that, you are a student of the great Nalanda University. Yoon Sang, during his stay at Nalanda, describes its beauty and vast area with buildings that towered over its meditative monks. The sheer size and awe of Nalanda's structure would awe even the most ardent of travellers. For 17 long years, Hyun Sang travelled around India before returning to China, where he converted Buddhist texts to Chinese and helped found Buddhism in a country where today over 100 million people are Buddhists. Here in Rajgir, a ropeway leads up to one of the Vishwashanti stupas built as a symbol of world peace after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. Life is suffering, said the Buddha. But the root of this belief isn't a pessimistic approach to life, but a positive one. Suffering, he said, is caused by human desires and only a person free from these desires can attain inner happiness and peace. Thousands of monks which come here to pray and celebrate that joy, that collective joy and peace by chanting Nam Yu Hyo Renge Kyo. When you come to this place and when you feel the wind hitting you across the face, you really don't feel that cold. You feel that calm hitting your head and just persisting there. It's beautiful. And you really feel like chanting Nam Yu Hyo Renge Kyo. This is the Kurt Parvat, better known in English as Vulture's Peak. This place has been built for 12 years. Mahatma Buddha has been built for 12 years. Besides this place, there is a special place. It is said in the Dharma Pundrik Sutra that it is mentioned that how after 2000 years of his teachings, when someone will remember them, the doors of heaven will automatically be opened for that person.
The core of Buddhism is beliefs in the teaching of the Buddha and not idolatry worship or meditation. After six years of suffering, Buddha reached here in Bodh Gaya and sat under this very tree and attained enlightenment. He told his followers, if at all people need something to worship, let them worship this Bodhi tree which has provided me shelter as it will others in the search of truth. Kala Chakra literally means the wheel of time and is one of the most esoteric concepts of Buddhism. The Tantra states that external phenomena are linked to the inner world of man through mind and body and thus people may influence the world by changing themselves. Here at the Kala Chakra festival in Bodh Gaya, one can't help but see the faith that binds together millions of souls in search of the meaning of life. And that's what it is, a faith beyond religion. For its core isn't worship, but that of atheism, because even worship is seen as a form of attachment to God. Buddhism may have declined dramatically in India, but its soul very much lingers on in Bihar. Through the pages of history and a dream of a progressive future, Bihar lives on with the hustle bustle of a modern state. Yet, it manages to hold on to its rich cultural and spiritual identity. Money, 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 money